Over the weekend, it was discovered that Nintendo Switch's 8.0.0 and conversely 8.0.1 update for Nintendo Switch includes what is tentatively called a boost mode for Nintendo Switch. Now, I was asked about this over the weekend during various Q&As and live stream conversations, and to be completely frank, I had not done much research into it. It had just been a headline I saw on Twitter, and I kind of dismissed it in general as something that isn't that big of a deal. I heard it affected load times in games like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, but in hindsight, it's still something that's extremely interesting and actually makes Switch act a lot and I mean this sincerely, a lot like a PC. Now, as we scroll down here, this is obviously on Gear Nuke is where I got this information from. They are the furthest back outlet I could find that first reported on it. Um, there is the Switch 4.0 8.0 update that came out. And uh, it was, it, it, as you see here over here on the Discord server, it says M4XW says, in fact, in 8.0, Nintendo added a, a 1.75 gigahertz CPU clock um, as a boost mode. Come to find out it's actually a 1.785, so it's actually a lot closer to 1.8 than it is 1.7. Uh, but whatever, it's still a significant boost clock uh, to the Switch. And this is the CPU that we're talking about. Now, the CPU typically runs at uh, 1.02 uh, so basically 1 gigahertz is, is the big takeaway is what the CPU usually runs at. And this nearly doubles that, this mode that they added to Switch. And this mode applies in docked mode or handheld. Uh, and the Switch itself probably can't handle a consistent 1.75, 1.78 uh, boost clock like that because of heat. Uh, I talked about this a bit over the weekend when people were asking me about this, you know, hey, can the Switch sustain this and run it like this all the time? Is this to make Mortal Kombat run at 60 FPS? Is this for that? Is this for this? Is this for future games? Uh, and reality is the Switch isn't going to run at this all the time. Uh, think of this more like the turbo boost that is on a lot of CPUs. For those who don't know, in the PC world, uh, there's this thing called turbo boost. And what it is is a temporary overclocking of your CPU. So you have your base clock. Say your base clock is 3.8 gigahertz, right? You might have a boost clock of 4.2. That boost clock is a turbo boost and it is just a temporary boost of one, two, or maybe all of your cores for a short period of, of time during highly intensive scenes. And that seems to be similar to what Switch is doing, except they're limiting it even more than that. And this is for good reason because a lot of games could take advantage of the 1.785 uh, boost in, in general for the entirety of the game. Like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 could use it to run at higher resolution and better frame rates, right? Uh, so, you know, heck, Yoshi's Crafted World that I just dropped a review for today, that could use it to hit actual HD resolution. Not something I talked about in the review because I don't think it's that relevant to the review, but uh, it is something that could benefit that game. But again, that would require running it at that clock speed all the time. And... To be honest, the Switch can't do that. Um, I have my my CPU overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. I'm running a Ryzen 2700X on the base uh, cooler, the cooler it comes with. And to be honest, it can't always stay at 4.1, and it thermal throttles and cuts itself back to protect itself. And the same thing happens on Switch. So what they have done, what we have seen, Nintendo's doing something quite clever here, is they are using this boost clock to improve load times uh so according to brawl 345 uh breath of the wild's load times go like this uh the old load time for loading from a save file was 31 seconds it is now down to 21 seconds fast travel in the game which usually took 19 seconds to load is now down to 11 seconds and the one that you might not notice as easily are entering shrines. I assume this means for exiting shrines as well. Usually it takes 10 seconds. Now it's down to 7 seconds, which is a 30% uh, improvement in that area. So uh, it just stays boosted at that during the load sequences, and then once you're loaded, it, it down clocks back to 1 gigahertz. Uh, this is a very smart use of the boost clock. So basically what they're saying is, look, we can run this thing hotter. It's just not safe to run it hotter 
all the time. Uh, maybe the heat sink can't handle it. There's also battery concerns to think about by adding more heat and draining the battery quicker. Uh, but using it in these temporary loading situations, it actually can make for a better gameplay experience as you're wasting less and less time waiting between load sequences. And this is also true I've heard in Super Mario Odyssey. I tested it myself. Unfortunately, I don't have any older Super Mario Odyssey footage with a bunch of loading tested, so um, it was hard for me to confirm on that front. But from my recollection, it was a little bit faster in Super Mario Odyssey as well. And Nintendo's probably going to apply this boost clock to a lot of games moving forward, if not retroactively adding it to prior games, uh, just to make loading sequences go faster. And this is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than I think I initially thought, because it does mean that Nintendo is willing to mess around with things, even for temporary boosts. And you have to start wondering, you know, is this kind of thing going to happen for cutscenes? Is this kind of thing going to be expanded upon? Because clearly the Switch can handle running it for short periods of time. Uh, so if it can handle running it, you know, between 20 and 30 seconds at a time, is it possible that they can find other ways to implement the use of this boost clock more and more in games moving forward? And are they going to let third parties play around with this boost clock as well? That is, I think, the million dollar question here uh, when it comes to this boost clock is, will Nintendo allow other people to use it and not just them? And the answer is probably yes, because Nintendo has allowed all the other modes in the game, all the various boost modes, all the different frequencies from docked and handheld and the various frequencies you can do in each one. They have allowed them to do that. Heck, did you know that if third parties want, they can run docked mode frequencies in handheld? There's actually, I think, one game on the market that actually does do that, where it will run the docked mode specs in handheld. And yes, the Switch can handle those specs in handheld. It's just battery concerns, right? The, the battery drains much quicker. So instead of getting your two and a half to three hours of battery life, you might get one hour to one and a half, right? So that's kind of why Nintendo kind of encourages people to use the downclocked uh, mode that's specific for handheld. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is this is big news. I mean, we're, we're talking... Uh, a significant load time increase, uh, you know, 30% load time increases are nothing to scoff at. And uh, I am very impressed that Nintendo decided to do this. It also shows that the bottleneck for load times is obviously CPU related. People were wondering, well, you know, what about uh, loading from a cartridge into a game? What about loading save files? What about this and that? You know, is it the speed of the cartridges and the speed of the flash memory that's causing a bottleneck and making us not have faster load times? Reality is it was just the speed of the CPU. It was downclocked to a point it was affecting how quickly files could be processed and loaded. So uh, again, they're not going to be able to run the switch like this all the time. Uh, that would not be advisable, I'm sure, based on the given heat sink. There's a reason that the switch doesn't even run the Tegra X1 at stock you know, in docked mode because there's just too much heat to deal with. And that heat affects the battery. That heat affects uh, everything. You can get even worse warping. And imagine that happened in handheld mode and then having your hands get super hot. That just would not be good and that's just a lawsuit waiting to happen so uh, i'm glad that nintendo found a way to temporarily boost it and have it not necessarily negatively impact the end user experience instead just making it better and it's gonna be interesting to see how they implement this moving forward i also am wondering if it's possible for a switch pro if a shrunk down die that's more power efficient might be targeting 1.785 gigahertz as a base Moving forward, that's obviously something to consider as well if they do revise a switch and release a new and improved version one day. Uh, if they're playing around with clock speeds, I think would make more sense. And obviously being able to run it at 1.785 means developers can test games out at 1.785 as well with dev kits, which might be beefier and more able to dissipate the heat for testing purposes because obviously Nintendo is not going to want people to like melt their dev kits because then they're just going to order more dev kits. So um anyways you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below i know that personally i think it's probably a bigger deal than i let on uh today it's only going to affect load times in the future who knows what this new cpu clock speed is going to affect i want to thank you guys for tuning in let me know what you think down in the comments below i am nathaniel robo gents from nintendo prime and i will catch all of you guys in the next video but before I go, be sure to drop a like on this video because, hey, it helps us out. It helps you out. If you like the video, you should be dropping likes. Subscribe for more content. And be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle giveaway through the Gleam. I only down in the description because, hey, it's free and it's a collector's item. So good luck. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.